who are sharing poetry internationally, but also why not get together with friends and have a poetry morning? I sometimes read poetry over the phone to people. You can hear the quiet click as they put the <laughs> <laughs> In some countries, they still have that t- 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 clock you can telephone, you know, to find out what the time is. I do. I still ring it. <laughs> Tim, because I've never... Tim, one, two, three. I ring yes. Tim all the time. I'd never have a watch. I never have a watch. <laughs> I well, it, rely it, on Tim. It's time to read Night Mail by W.H. Auden, who was born in 1907 and lived to 1973. It's a wonderful poem, and the rhythm here is extraordinary. Your Royal Highness, take it away. This is the Night Mail crossing the border, bringing the cheque and the postal order. Letters for the rich, letters for the poor, the shop at the corner, the girl next door. Putting up b a steady climb, the gradients against her, but she's on time. Past cotton grass and moorland boulder, shoveling white steam over her shoulder. Snorting noisily as she passes, silent miles of wind-bet grasses. Birds turn their heads as she approaches, stare from bushes at her blank-faced coaches. Sheepdogs cannot turn her course, they slumber on with paws across. In the farm she passes, no one wakes, but a jug in a bedroom gently shakes. Dawn freshens. Her climb is done. Down towards Glasgow she descends, towards the steam tugs yelping down a glade of cranes, towards the field of apparatus, the furnaces set on the dark plain like gigantic chessmen. All Scotland waits for her, in dark glens, beside pale green lochs, men long for news. Letters of thanks, letters from banks, letters of joy from girl and boy, receipted bills and invitations to inspect new stock or to visit relations, and applications for situations, and timid lovers' declarations, and gossip, gossip from all the nations. News circumstantial, news financial, letters with holiday snaps to enlarge in, letters with faces scrawled in the margin, letters from uncles, cousins and aunts, letters to Scotland from the south of France, Letters of condolence to highlands and lowlands, written on paper of every hue. The pink, the violet, the white and the blue. The chatty, the catty, the boring, the adoring, the cold and official. And the hearts outpouring, clever, stupid, short and long. The typed and the printed, and the spelt all wrong. Thousands are still asleep, dreaming of terrifying monsters, or a friendly tea beside the band in Cranston's or Crawford's. Asleep in work in Glasgow, asleep in Wellset Edinburgh, asleep in Granite Aberdeen, they continue their dreams, but shall wake soon and hope for letters, and none will hear the postman's knock without a quickening of the heart, for who can bear to feel himself forgotten? It's a wonderful poem, it isn't, is, it? isn't it? Chris? And it was done, I think, as a kind of commentary to a film. It, and the film was a flop, wasn't it? Oh, was it? I think and the, the, the poem lived on, but I think the, uh, um, the film didn't, didn't have many viewers. Didn't it have that music behind it? Who wrote the music? Because it was always given... And it was read out as a sort of pace. And then the slowing and the steam. My favourite line is shoveling white steam over her shoulder. Isn't that exactly the vision of these sort of chunks of light, fluffy, huge clouds? 